Hustle fam, what's up? It's your favorite country cousin, JT, back again with another live stream. If you do not know, the reason why I'm bouncing around is because I'm on a walking treadmill now. Got my Fitbit on, and we're still doing 10,000, at least 10,000 steps a day. Like yesterday, uh, we hit a new record. We did 20,000. It felt good. Um, the reason why I share that with you is because for years, this channel has simply been a resource to teach you about how to make more money. These are some side hustles. These are some businesses. Here's some investments. Here's some mindset training for those of you all that suffer from imposter syndrome or you have whatever it is that's holding you back, holding you back from getting to the next level. And I'm going to be honest with you, right, and repent to you on it that uh, I, I kind of let a lot of other things go by the wayside, right? My health being one of them. So by the grace of God, he allowed that to come to my awareness and now we're working on that. And I want to be a practitioner. You guys hear me say that all the time. I don't just want to be somebody that talks about doing stuff. I want you all to be able to bear witness to me doing those things. Now, in this video, I want to share my cheat notes with you. In this video, I'm going to share my cheat notes with you. This video is also live. So if you have a question, drop it in the live chat for those of you all that are here now. You're watching this after the fact. Make sure you turn on post notifications so you can join in the next live stream and put your questions down in the comment section below uh, for now, and I'll answer as many of them as I possibly can. So I am somebody that spends high five figures a year. This year might be the first year that we spend over six figures in a year on personal development. That's going to conferences that's paying mentors, that's joining different organizations that allow me to learn more about business, do more in business, grow more as an entrepreneur, and help further my knowledge and abilities so that way I can provide as much value to the people that I serve, hopefully get me closer to fulfilling my God-given purpose, and also bring more value to you guys as well. You hear a lot of people talk about mindset but I don't know if you understand the value of why this is so imperative. Thought control is the key to destiny. Thought control is the key to destiny. If you give the right tactical answer to somebody with the wrong philosophical mindset, they still won't be successful. Do you guys understand that? Talk to me in the chat. If you give the right tactical answer, to somebody with the wrong philosophical mind, they will not succeed. LeBron James could come in here and say, hey, JT, get off that treadmill. I'm going to go teach you everything I know about basketball today. Everything I know from start to finish, right? After he leaves, how many of you all think that I'll go get drafted by an NBA team? I'll go ahead and tell you the answer. Zero. Right? Why? Because even though I know what he knows, if I paid attention at least, I still haven't become the type of person that can execute it the way that he executes it or a way that's anywhere near comparable of how he and other elite players can execute it. I'm using that as a physical example for illustration purposes, but in your business, I want you to know that how it works is you have to become mentally the right man, the right woman, the right business owner to be able to tactically be able to know how to handle this information and deal with the nuances of a situation, right? Everybody's life is different. So yes, I can give you the blueprint, but what if when I give you the blueprint, your job lays you off? What if when I give you the blueprint, you have an issue with your kids, your spouse, or whatever? What if a recession comes as soon as you get the blueprint? What if you try to follow the blueprint and then you run into an issue with execution, right? If you're somebody that's mentally not the right person, you're going to quit. You're going to make excuses. You're going to play the blame game, right? You're going to do everything except make it happen. So thought control is the key to destiny. Let's get into these seven mental laws. Stay tuned to the end and I'll give you an eighth bonus law 
that I've recently found out. And since I've been doing this, my income has went crazy, right? Has went crazy. All right. Here's the first mental law that I received for paying mentors uh, five figures, right? Five figures to learn. All right. One is called the law of substitution. The only way to change a belief system is to replace it. Right. Now, I'm not wearing it now. Like I said, I'm just wearing my Fitbit to count my steps for me. But I do own watches that are five figures, $10,000 on up. All right. Here's a question for you. You can either answer in the chat or you can just think about it to yourself if you're traveling. I'm doing this live stream on a weekend. I know a lot of people are moving around right now, right? Is $10,000 a lot of money? Is $10,000 a lot of money, right? Believe it or not, $10,000 being a lot of money depends on your reference point. A lot of people may just innately say, no, $10,000 is not a lot of money. Or heck yes, $10,000 is a lot of money. The same conviction that the person that says, no, it's not a lot of money has, so does the person that says, heck yeah, do you know all this stuff I could do with $10,000? How could these two people have totally opposing answers to the same question and both have the same conviction? And both be right. It depends on your reference point. I'll give you guys an example. Let's say that I said $10,000 is a lot of money. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to a realtor and I'm going to tell him or her, I want to buy a brand new, new construction home. I got $10,000 in cash money that I'll drop on them right now. I don't want to use it as a down payment. I want to own the house free and clear. What do you think that developer or that realtor is going to tell me? Man, you crazy, JT. You can't even get all the materials to build a house for 10 grand. You're talking about new construction, much less the labor, right? What if I take that 10,000 and say, okay, you know what? Y'all are crazy. I'm right. You wrong. Y'all think that $10,000 is not a lot of money. I'm going to leave the realtor's office or the developer. I'm going to go to the brand new car dealership. I'm going to go down to Mercedes Benz. All right. I'm going to go to Mercedes Benz and say, hey, I want the newest SUV y'all got. I want all the bells and whistles, all the tech you can give me. I got $10,000 cash money I'll drop on you right now. I don't want to put it as a down payment. When I give you the $10,000, go get the title to my car, drop it on me. I just left the realtor office. Right. Just left the realtor's office. I tried to drop it on getting the deed to a property. They was crazy. They didn't understand. It. All right. What are they going to tell me at the car dealership? Sir, you can't get our latest model SUV for ten thousand dollars. Right. You might can put it as a down payment towards getting it, but you can't own it outright for that. Right. What's your point, JT? What if I changed my mindset by using the law of substitution? Because a lot of people could just say, well, I'll just say it's not a lot of money. Well, the, the powerful part of this, since we're talking about these are the universal mental laws to make millions of dollars, is that you can say anything to anybody, but your mind knows what you believe. So just because you said it out loud to me and others doesn't mean that you truly believe it at your core. And without truly believing it at your core, nothing is going to happen or very little, but usually nothing is going to happen, right? So with the law of substitution, this is what I want you all to think of instead. Instead of saying $10,000 is a lot of money, what can we substitute that with? $10,000 is just an offer. If I'm a car salesman, that's just one car, right? If I sell houses, that's less than one house, right? If I help businesses grow, that's one client. If you do a catering service, right, and you charge $1,000 to do a wedding, which I don't know your prices, so don't beat me up in the comment section. Uh, I, I'm just, you know, using easy numbers, right? 
That's 10 events. All right. So under the law of substitution, it tells us that the only way to change a belief system is to replace it. So if we believe this to be a lie, let's convert that thing into something else. You guys know my story because I tell it time and time again. It was easier for me to make 30K a month than it was for me to make 10K a month. How in the world is that possible, JT? When I first set out years ago on having a goal of making $10,000 in a month, it was a very selfish goal. I thought about how I could live, what I could do, what kind of shoes could I buy, where could I stay, what kind of luxury apartment, what kind of car could I finance, blah, 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 right? It was very selfish that if JT made $10,000 a month, you couldn't tell me I wasn't a baller. The problem with that is that there was no incentive for any mentor to help me get the $10,000 a month because it wouldn't benefit that mentor or anybody else for that matter. There was no incentive for a potential client to spend money with me because I was more concerned with what I would do with the money than what I would give them in exchange for the money, right? So that being said, that made $10,000 extremely hard for me, right? Extremely hard for me. Now, by the time I got to having the goal of 30K a month, few years later, this was now fast forward to back in 2018, 2018, 2019-ish, when I had uh, the, the goal, small goal of making 30K a month, right? My, my whole mindset had changed. And I said, you know what? How could I impact 30,000 people a month in a positive way? How could I impact 30,000 people a month in a positive way? Right? Now, that sounds like a lot. But there's another law here that I'm going to share with you with the, uh, in a minute that allowed me to really figure this out in a simplistic way. Right? That law is law number six, which you think upon grows, all right? But we'll get deeper to that in a second. Thinking about how can I help 30,000 people initially was very overwhelming. That's a whole lot of people. So then I thought, well, what if I help businesses? And if these businesses help other businesses or other individuals, right? Right? If your goal was to help thousands of people a month, you could have one client if the one client is Amazon. You could have one client if the one client is Walmart, right? So you don't need to personally help a whole lot of people individually. But I switched my mindset and said, whatever amount of money I want to make, let me convert that into the amount of people that I want to help serve and I passed that goal way before I started helping 30,000 people a month. Does that make sense? Right? So first law is the law of substitution. It says the only way to change a belief system is to replace it. So whatever negative beliefs you have, whatever limiting beliefs that you have right now, you have to replace those with a positive belief. That's how the mind works. Let me check on you all in the chat. Shout out to Colorado. What's up? What's up, everybody here? All right. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. I think everybody is, for the most part, on the same page. What's the second mental law to help you make millions of dollars? Again, this is this is me sharing my cheat notes with you, right? I spent five figures to be mentored by a very high-level earner, nine-figure earner. That's 100 million plus. All right? So they not cheap. Well, in comparison, paying five figures to somebody that is a, a nine-figure business owner is cheap. But for most people, they wouldn't consider, you know, $50,000 or, or five figures uh, to be cheap to get mentored by anybody. All right? So next law, law of relaxation. All right? Just hearing that law, some people might say, hey, I like this law, JT. What does the law of relaxation says? The law of relaxation says in all mental work, effort defeats itself. 
and all mental work, effort defeats itself. This is kind of hard to understand on face value because the law of the mind sometimes, and in this case specifically, works in inverse or in the reverse of the law of matter. What do I mean when I say the law of matter? Well, the harder I work digging a hole, the quicker I finish digging the hole. The harder I try to run a drill uh, through a board, the quicker that I drill through the board. So these are laws of matter, right? So when we think about laws of matter that we can just observe and say, yes, that makes sense because I saw how it worked, right? Then somebody gives you this mental law of relaxation that in all mental work effort defeats itself. You're like, nah, that doesn't make sense, right? So we do have to have the discernment to understand that there are mental laws, right? Laws of the mind and then laws of matter is what you might hear people call, call them. But we need to understand how they both work together to make your life as an entrepreneur as efficient as possible, right? So mental pressure, right, suppresses your creativity and under extended mental pressure, your mind will rely on habits. The problem with that is what if you didn't build up any high level, highly successful habits, right? If you're under a whole lot of pressure and you're not taking the time to relax because you're like, I got to get this stuff done. I got to figure this out. I can't go spend a weekend at the beach. I can't just, you know, say, hey, the work will still be here. I'll tell you this. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 10 years. I have never ran out of work to do. My mentors have been in business longer than I've been alive, and I'm 33 years old as of this recording, right? Some of them been in business decades longer than I've been alive. They have still never ran out of work to do. What's the lesson here? No matter what you complete, there is always another opportunity to learn something, to do something, to make some money, to go, you know, whatever in your business. So when you're feeling like you're overwhelmed and you got to get this stuff done, I just want you to know that when that stuff gets done, there is still an unlimited number of other things to do, right? So take the time to relax because if you're waiting until there's nothing else for you to do to relax, you will die early from exhaustion, all right? So the law of relaxation and all mental work effort defeats itself. The, this law of the mind works inversely to the law of matter. Mental pressure suppresses creativity and under pressure, your mind relies on habits. And if you have not spent the time to develop good millionaire or six-figure earner habits, you're going to rely on things that don't serve you in a positive way, right? They're going to rely on things that don't serve you in a positive way. All right. That's the law of relaxation. All right. So take some time for yourself to recharge. If you think about it. So I'm coming up with a board game. Matter of fact, I don't know if you guys can see it because of the lighting here. Probably can't because of the lighting, but once I get the sample in, and you guys have seen it previously before as well, I'm coming out with a with a board game that teaches generational wealth. I'm also coming out with a Christian card game, which you guys might not be able to see that either because of the lighting in here. How in the world does a grown man have time to figure out how to make a game, a card game and a board game? I got a daughter. I got a mom, I got bills, I got business, I got a lot of stuff going on, right? Just as much, if not more, than the average person, right? But the average person may feel like I don't have time to make, why would I make a board game to begin with? And even if I knew a good reason to make it, when would I have the time to do it, all right? But by practicing the law of relaxation, I was not only able to understand why, A, you should make a game, but B, how do you make a game? 
quick little fun fact, and then we'll go to law number three. Currently, the tabletop game industry, board games, card games, anything that's not a video game, uh, if we want to oversimplify it, is a $13 billion a year industry. That's $13 billion with a B. Billion with a B. Not million, not thousand, $13 billion a year. Now, the majority of that, because let's keep it a buck, because Cousin JT ain't got no reason to lie to you. The majority of that is absorbed by the major players, which are Hasbro and Mattel, or Hasbro and Mattel, however you want to pronounce it. But the average independent tabletop developer makes between, because there's a range, because while we are all the same value as souls, in the marketplace, some of us are better at it, things than others when it comes to the marketplace. So in the marketplace, the average independent tabletop game developer makes between 80 to 180,000 a year. 80 to 180 grand off of their card game, board game, whatever tabletop game they invent. Are there people that are below average that make games that make no money? Yes. Just like there are people that are below average that write books that make no money, but I've been making a full-time income off of my books since 2017, 2018. So it's easy to understand how you can compound and become a millionaire if you could take your book royalty income, pay all of your bills, so now your rental income from your Airbnb you never have to spend. Your dividend stock income you never have to spend. If you make any money off of your social media or your other investments in other businesses, you don't need to spend that money to pay your bills. So how long would it take you to start accumulating bigger and better assets that are going to appreciate at a greater rate and cash flow to you higher so that way you could become a six, seven or whatever your goal is, figure entrepreneur if you didn't have bills, right? So that's a little tangent I wanted to go down. Let's get back on it though. We'll talk more about tabletop games in another one. But the whole point that I was making is that mental pressure suppresses your creativity. And out of creativity, you can learn about other opportunities that can make you more money. I don't know about you, but even if you're below average, since average is 80 to 180, let's say you're below average. You make 30 grand a year. Would anybody here be mad about making an extra $30,000 a year on top of what you're already making? Right. Would anybody here be mad? And I'm talking about net profit, not gross income, net profit. So after all expenses, would anybody here be mad about making an extra 30 K a year on top of what you already make? Right. That's the law of relaxation. Law number three is the law of the subconscious or the law of, excuse me, subconscious activity. Some of them got in my eye walking on this treadmill. Now I can't even read. All right. Uh, so the law of subconscious activity tells us that as soon as the subconscious mind accepts any idea, it immediately begins trying to put it into effect. It uses all of its resources to do so. That's the law of subconscious activity. That's why I tell you guys all the time, your wealth is going to manifest itself in your mind long before it hits your bank account. The reason being in a nutshell is the law, right, of subconscious activity. If you believe that this year, without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to make $100,000 more this year than you made last year, right? I know a lot of people now, you might have just finished doing your taxes, might be finishing it up now. So you looking at how much money you made. Some of you all might say, this is how much money they say I made, but I don't really feel like I made that much money, right? So however you feel about it, all right, what if you truthfully thought that before the end of December this year, you would make not just what you made before, but you would make $100,000 more this year than what you made last year. So if you made 85000 last year, you're going to do at least 185 this year. If you made a million last year, you're going to make 1.1 at least this year, right? How would that change the habits that you have? Who would you talk to? 
what would you do? Right? We're looking for guarantees in life, right? If there was a guarantee, you would go all in because what they want you to believe is that if you don't have a guarantee, you shouldn't do it. What we truthfully know is that the way that you give yourself a guarantee is by going all in first. It has to work or it has to work, right? I am firsthand an example of worst case scenario in entrepreneurship for anybody that's new that doesn't know that. I'm the entrepreneur that quit their corporate America job, went all in with their savings, had a little run, right? Made six figures. Couldn't tell me nothing. I'm an entrepreneur prodigy at 24. But then what I don't know inevitably hurt me. I ended up being broken, homeless, sleeping on the side of Interstate 95, right? If you're familiar with the East Coast, you know what I'm talking about. But on the side of whatever interstate is nearest you, all right, just think about that. If you ended up doing so bad that you had to sleep on the side of an interstate, right? Not at a shelter, not go back to mama and grandma house. You slept on the side of an interstate, right? That was the reality of my life. I even put the video out here on this channel. It was years later. I'm not going to lie because I recorded myself being there and I was embarrassed at the time, right? So I later dropped the video once we were doing better. But the reason why I recorded it is because my faith even when I was broken, homeless on the side of the road, my faith was still, I'm going to do way better than this, right? I can't tell you why. I can't tell you how. I don't know who's going to give me the money. So that way I can go get a hotel room or an apartment or a house or whatever, right? But I still operated under that faith. So I want you all to know, stop looking for guarantees in life. You give yourself a guarantee by saying, hey, it either has to work or it has to work. Because when I was broken homeless, I got a call on my prepaid Boost mobile phone that I had at the time. And I got offered a $60,000 job. And I told them, no, I'm going to be an entrepreneur or I'm going to die trying. Right? I might even have my VA. I don't even know if my email will go back that far. But uh, if, if my email will keep emails that long, I might even see one day if I can have my VA try to go find that offer letter that they, that they emailed me, right? I don't know if I can or not, so I'm not promise you I will because it's been a long time ago. But I turned down a 60K a year job in 2017, right? Some of you all might be happy to make 60K a year now. Not a knock, but I turned down... 60k in 2017 before all the inflation and stuff that we got today is the point that I'm making right told them no told them no it has to work or it has to work right boom let's go on to the next law though so we just covered the law of the subconscious uh activity next is the law of practice this is a very simple one to become proficient in any field you must practice now you must practice the tactical stuff that you should be doing. You almost, you must also practice the mindset, right? You must also practice having the proper mindset as well. You must also practice not just the mindset, not just the tactical steps, but you must also practice the habits. What does that mean? Do people that operate at a high level the way that you want to operate in the niche, in the field, doing the thing that you believe that you can do or the thing that you desire to do, right? What don't they do? What don't they do? What type of people do they associate with? How do they carry themselves, right? I haven't been to a club, not knocking those of you all that go to clubs, because I know it's Saturday when I'm doing this, some people ain't going to like this. I haven't been to a club in probably a decade, at least, maybe longer than that. I haven't been to a club in a decade, right? I go to business conferences all the time, right? Business conferences all the time. All the new people I meet, 
I met them at a business conference or just through the, the course of, of doing business, right? I'm not saying I'll never go to a club like if I don't know what scenario it would be. I don't have a desire to go, but I guess assuming under the right scenario, I might go with somebody if there's an event at a club. But what kind of habits do highly successful people that I want to model practice where they're not in clubs, right? They're going to bed early. They're getting up early. They understand that true entrepreneurship is holistic, meaning that you get the bag, but you also have the relationships that you want intact. You also work on your health. You understand that it's an infinite game. There is no finish line. You win by having the ability to keep playing the game, just like life. You win in life by having the ability to keep living the life that you want to live, right? Fulfilling your God-given purpose, all right? You don't win at getting healthy, right? You don't get a six-pack abs and then say, okay, I'm going to go eat cheeseburgers the rest of my life because you're going to reverse all of that work you put in. But the law of practice says to become proficient in any field, you must practice, but you got to practice in all areas, the right mindset, the right habits, all right, and the tactical information. A lot of people are just looking for the tactical information. Next law, it's the law of two factors. What is What are the two factors, JT? So glad that you asked. Every thought is made of two factors, knowledge and feelings. Every thought is made of two factors, knowledge and feelings, right? No matter how important or magnificent the knowledge in your head is, if you don't attach any emotion or any feeling to it, nothing's going to happen. We talk about imposter syndrome where a lot of you all think just because you have it, it's less valuable, right? I got people in my family like that. You could give them a, a, a million dollar necklace or watch or earrings, whatever. And one, they're not going to believe that it's a million dollars because why would you give it to them? Secondly, they're going to say, well, if it's worth a million dollars, I'm going to go to the pawn shop, see if they give me at least 200000 right? <laughs> These are the people that have not the right to say it nicely, mindset, all right? If you want to be a high-level entrepreneur, you have to get over that imposter syndrome and stop devaluing stuff just because you have it. It could be worth a million dollars and you can have it. It's not worth 200000 now that you have it, right? So the knowledge in your head, I'm using a tangible example, like if it was a diamond watch or earrings or necklace or whatever, but the information in your head is actually more valuable than diamonds or any precious stone, all right? But stop devaluing what you know or what you can go learn if you feel like you don't know enough, right? Stop devaluing it because it's in your possession, all right? Law number six. What you think upon grows. What you think upon grows, right? Whatever occupies your mind will magnify itself in your life. This is arguably one of the most powerful laws of the mind. If you guys got value out of this, smash that like button, right? If you guys are enjoying the fact that you didn't have to spend $50,000 to go sit at the feet of a nine-figure entrepreneur to learn this game, Right, smash the like button. Share this with as many people as possible that you know it'll help. All right? Because I feel like, you know, part of my value is helping as many other people change their perspective and then change their financial future as well. Right? We're almost finished here because I got big things happening today. You guys know I'm not a dog breeder, but I'm a guy that has dogs that breed it. So we getting rid of the last of our puppies today, Lord willing. Uh, got some people going to come meet me to get those puppies. Um, and just other boring business stuff that is, that's exciting to me. So what you think upon grows, whatever occupies your mind will magnify itself in your life. Arguably one of the most powerful laws of the mind. All right. Law number seven is the law of forgiveness. You guys might have heard this one already. You must forgive others sincerely 
in order to progress. Not for their sake, but for yours, because you can forgive somebody and they cannot care, right? They can feel like whatever you feel like I did that was wrong. I feel like what I did was right. So I don't care how you feel about it. So you're not forgiving that person so that way they can sleep well at night. Lots of times they already made peace with it. So you're forgiving people to free up the mental bandwidth so you don't get mental fatigue, worried about changing people that you can't change. And now you can spend that same energy and that same time, which is your most valuable asset, doing things that actually move the needle, right? So the law of forgiveness is for you, not for other people. When you sincerely forgive other men, other women, other whatever that you feel like have wronged you, situations, these could be family members, these could be friends, these could be business colleagues you had, you name, right? So the law of forgiveness teaches us we have to uh, sincerely forgive others in order for us to progress. That's going to free up our mental bandwidth, right? Allowing us more time, more energy, right? And those of us that believers understand that if we want forgiveness, we got to forgive. And you guys know I'm unapologetically a believer. Doesn't mean that I'm a perfect person. I make a lot of mistakes all the time, right? But I do credit 100% of my success to God, all right? And I believe if you keep God first, you can reach all of your goals. Now, the niche that we specialize in here are just your financial goals. But don't get it twisted. You can fulfill all of your goals if you keep him first, right? If I can give you guys a bonus tip that learning this tip really make my income explode, somebody put bonus in the live chat, right? If I can give you guys a bonus tip that has really helped my business to explode, somebody put the word bonus in the live chat, right? While you guys are doing that, I'm going to keep walking on my treadmill. I'm going to see if there's any questions here that I haven't covered yet. All right, some people said that happened to me. Yes, it's very true. I needed to hear that. All right. What advice will you give to someone who is serious about starting a business with no job and wants to start making good money in 30 days? Right. I think that you should start a B2B business based off of what your skill set is, what it, based off what your current knowledge is. So I wouldn't try to go do B2C and have to buy products and do all of this stuff. I would go say, this is what I know. This is what I have. And this is how it can help businesses, not individuals. Right. Businesses are way easier to sell to. Right. And then I would go sell my services to businesses. Right. I don't know exactly what it is that you're good at, that the open market will find valuable. So I can't tell you exactly sell them your this service or that service. But you know what you're good at. You know what businesses can utilize based off of your knowledge or experience, what it is that you have. But definitely. Right. You could definitely do that. That's why I'm, I'm telling you guys, if you sub 100K a year, I don't even know why you're not B2B. It doesn't make any sense to me to not be a B2B business if you're not making $100,000 a year, right? It is so hard to do it without doing that. Of course, some people just have their preference. Some people choose the hard way, but definitely that's what I would do. That's what I am doing. Even though my business is now significantly above six figures, I'm I just fell in love with B2B business. Right? Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, people that want to reach out to me directly, the best way to get direct access to me is uh for the people that are in the five-day program. When you join the five-day program, you're gonna get an email from Dallas or from somebody on my team um that is going to uh that's going to give you the contact information to reach out to me directly um, as well, right? So that's the all-encompassing way, right? That's the most cost-effective way too. Let's just be real, all right? Consultations are $2,500 an hour, all right? Um, 
media days are ten thousand dollars a day. All right. And the five day program is cheaper than both of them. So if you're just trying to connect with me, um, but still, hey, if you want to talk for an hour or longer, you can. Um, if you want to come do a media day, you can, right? People have done both and got a 10x result. So that's why we have those offers because they work. But I do know a lot of people are like in startup mode and um, may not be ready for that yet. All right. Uh, all right. Bonus. Okay. Here's what I want you to understand. Wealth is attracted to leverage, not hard work. Wealth is attracted to leverage, not hard work. How many of us always see in movies or however they like to depict it, the rich, wealthy person is always out of shape, going bald in the top. They got a nice car, got a supermodel girlfriend. Maybe even people that you see in real life are like, that person, that man or woman is not really like attractive, but they have attractive things around them, right? How in the world did you get with that person? How in the world do you live like this? And you look like that, like you can't even dress, but you got all of this, right? I want you to understand wealth is attracted to leverage, not hard work. Wealth is attracted to leverage, not hard work. The eighth law that I want to give you, right, is tied to one of the four leverages that we covered in last live stream. You can go back and watch it if you know what all four are. But one of the C's of leverage is collaboration. The law, right... The law here that I want you all to understand, let me get it right. Like I said, I'm giving you guys my cheat notes, all right? It's called the law of advancement, all right? The law of advancement in a nutshell basically says everything has to go down before it goes up. The example that's oftentimes used is think of a seed. Seed grows roots down, and then eventually it grows up, breaks the topsoil, right? If I was to tell everybody that's here that could do it safely, not if you're driving a car or doing something else, but if you were just sitting around somewhere, if you were to now or to at any point today, stand up as tall as you can, lock your legs out, roll your shoulders back, hold your head high, right? Stand up as tall as you possibly can. And then without bending your knees, jump as high as you can. It's impossible, right? It's impossible. You might can get... Off the ground, right, if your toes are that strong, but you can't jump as high as you can without first getting that momentum by going down and then jumping up, right? And there's a lot of other examples that people use other than jumping, other than how seeds grow. Those of us that are believers uh, recognize the parallel between how Jesus Christ had to go down in the grave in order to be able to come up and overcome sin and now afford us the opportunity for everlasting life, right? So there's a lot of different examples here. I don't want to get bogged down in the examples. Let me just tell you how it applied to me and how it applies to many others. And if you want to utilize it as well, you could apply it to your situation. I used to be the guy that if they figured it out, I could figure it out. I'm not buying a book, I'm not buying a course. Not joining your program, JT. I'm not, I'm not paying for nothing. I'm going to look at the free game, and then I'm going to go execute on it, right? And when people, you guys know a little bit about my pedigree, first person in my family to get a master's degree, a uh, decorated Marine Corps veteran, uh, my commanding officer was going to sign off on me going to Quantico, Virginia, and I would have became a commissioned officer if I would have re-enlisted back in the Marine Corps. Um First money in corporate America got employee of the month because I outsold the sales manager and I was an operations assistant manager. So uh, typically people that know me closely are like how when I was homeless, right, back in 2017, how in the world does somebody like you end up broken, homeless, sleeping on the side of the road? Wasn't on drugs. Uh, uh, wasn't, you know, chasing a whole bunch of women, trying to have a whole bunch of babies all over the world, right? How, how does somebody with your pedigree end up being broken homeless? Typically, that's not the narrative. And what I had to come to terms with and what I always share with them was the reason why I went broken homeless was because of common sense. Common sense is just a culmination of your experiences from the time that you were born to whatever stage of life you're in right now. 
what's common sense to you in a given situation may be nonsense to somebody that's half your age. It may be nonsense to somebody that's double your age. But for you, it's common sense, right? So again, common sense for you is just a culmination of your experiences from the time that you were born to whatever age you are now, right? Somebody half your age, it might be considered wisdom. Somebody double your age might consider that nonsense, right? So the law of advancement, when I learned it and started applying it, was saying, okay, what I know from firsthand experience is even if I felt like I was smart enough to figure it out on my own, there's no guarantee that I will figure it out on my own just because I'm smart or think I'm smart. There is even no guarantee that even if I am smart enough to figure it out on my own, I won't exhaust all of my resources before I figure it out, right? Which I feel like a combination of both those things happened to me, right? So by tapping in to the law of advancement, that's when I started saying, okay, I don't have a lot of money. Let me start off with eBooks, right? Okay, eBooks took me this far. Let, let me look at this now. What's the next level? Then what's the next level, right? And what I found out is that the true value in joining in with mentors or people that are at a higher level than I was, was not that they figured out something that I believe that I could figure out eventually. It's how much faster I got the result. How much faster I got the result, Right? I used to be crazy enough to rather take 10 years to get to a destination just to say that I got here without a map. I thought that was cool. Hey, I figured out how to get here on my own. I didn't use a map or a GPS. I just wandered around the world so I ended up here, right? It could have been a two-hour journey if I knew the right path and had the right vehicle to get there. But no, pride made me say if they figured it out, I could figure it out. They probably scamming. If they know how to make that much money, they wouldn't teach anybody how to do it and blah, 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 right? So the law of advancement is why when you hear me say, I spent five figures, I spent six figures, I'm spending this money going to conferences, joining these organizations, getting mentored by this person or that person, some people hear it and say, you're either lying or that's crazy. Right. Or both. You a crazy liar. All right. So but those of us that are actually living it, know it to be true and understand why we do it. Understand that by enacting the law of advancement, we get more than what we could achieve by ourselves. We're leveraging one of the C's of leverage, which is collaboration. And we're getting it faster. Does anybody want not just more than what they expect out of a situation, but to get it faster? Right. If you want not just more than what you expect to get out of your financial situation. Right. But also want to get there faster. I want to remind you that in the description of all of these YouTube videos, if you're a business owner already, but you haven't figured out how to consistently make 100K in 12 months or less, I have a five day program that I'm so confident will get you there. That I'll give you your money back if you follow the program and don't make a hundred grand in 12 months or less, right? It's not a 30 day money back guarantee. It's not a seven day money back guarantee. Go through the program and do the stuff for 12 months and then tell me it doesn't work, right? If you actually done it, not just tell me because you wanted to tell me. The reason why I'm so confident in this program is because the same program that you can click the description and tap into is what I use for my clients. My latest client just had a 40 K month, their first month working with me following the program. And they didn't even do everything that I wanted them to do. Told them they should have had a 50 K first month, right? They should have had a 50 K first month and grow from there. They did some of the stuff, not all of it. They think like 42 or something. Right. So they, they left a lot of meat on the bone, right? I'm a country boy from the Carolinas, right? Mom, mama don't let you leave no meat on the bone, right? We ain't had it like that. So I digress, right? You, you not that client, so I don't got to fuss with you all about it. But the point that I'm making here 
is that I'm giving you the formula that, that makes people millionaires, right? I'm just framing it in a way that I think that the average person that's a business owner can believe it because a lot of you all, like I said earlier, suffer from imposter syndrome and believe that you're not good enough to be a millionaire. So I'm going to show you how to be a millionaire and put it under frame of it's going to make you 100K in 12 months or less because I know you're going to make 100K in 12 months or less because this is literally what I do for clients. What you're going to learn how to do, the only difference between what you're going to learn how to do and what I do and what my clients get is that I just do it for them, right? And I charge them at least 60K a year, and then it goes up from there. A lot of them pay over six figures a year for my services, right? If there's no more questions, I'm going to get up out of here. But I do want to touch on all of these questions real quick because that's why we do them live. All right. Can someone start a new business? Sign up with your five day class. Uh, they could. Yep, yep. Um, th let, let me be clear on this, right? So I sincerely want you all to know, and, and maybe other people say this. I don't really know what they say, but I could just talk about me. This is not a buy my program so I can get your money. I'm not that type of guy. Not that type of business owner. I believe in reciprocity. I believe in you reap what you sow. So. I don't want to sell anything to any business, right? Because I'm a B2B entrepreneur. So I sell primarily to businesses. I do a little B2C stuff. I got books and whatever, right? And um, But I don't want to do anything just to get some money one time. And then now this person doesn't get a massive return on their investment, right? So yes, you can start a new business and join the program. But I recently showed you guys how I helped the company make $30,000 by solving a problem that took me 45 minutes to solve. And then they paid me $3,000, a tenth of that. The reason why I was able to go in and in 45 minutes solve a problem that increased their profits by 30 k was because they already were an established business. They weren't a startup. They were already making multiple six figures a year without me, right? So could I do that with a startup? I would venture to say probably not, right? Not in 45 minutes solve a problem that's going to make you 30K. I'm just being real. Maybe one day I get that good. That's one of my goals. But right now, just being real, I'm not telling you to join the program and give me your money because you think that every 45 minutes you're going to make 30 grand. This company already was structured properly. They already were in business. They knew who their customer was. They already knew what they were doing. So I wasn't helping a business figure out how to be a business, if that makes sense. I was helping a business, and what I specialize in is I help existing businesses solve problems, not start. Just being real, right? And I'm putting all the cards on the table. Other people would just say, heck yeah. Give me your money, give me your money, give me your money. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't know what you're doing, right, there are so many problems there that this may not be the right program for you, right? So, so I still love you. I appreciate you even considering doing business with me. But I don't want your money if I can't give you a massive return on your investment with speed and efficiency. Right. If that makes sense. Right. I'm not trying to be arrogant. Like I'm the rich guy that don't need your poor people money. That's not what I'm saying. And I got to say that because I've heard other people when I try to explain this, interpret it that way. No, I'm a B2B entrepreneur primarily. I only want to work with you if I can give you a massive return in a small amount of time. Small amount of time is relative. Right. For this business, it was 45 minutes. For this program, we're saying within 12 months or less. The or less part is really more so on the business than on me, right? The or less part, like how, how sooner than 12 months is not even something that I decide. It's up to the business to decide, right? So I can't even tell them if you're going to do it in one month or in 11 and a half months. It's up to you, right? 
which is why this program is significantly, right, one to one hundredth of what I charge my clients, right? Uh, that was the first part of the question. What was the other part of the question? I just wanted to be clear on that, right? Just being real. I do appreciate you considering me, but I'm not here just to take your money. Save your money or enjoy your money yourself, right? But if I can help you massively change your business, I will, right? That's why I give everybody in the program direct access to me. Uh, boom, boom, boom. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I already answered the second part of your question without even knowing it was there. Okay, cool. So, yep, that's up to the business, right? Now, prerequisite, this newest client that made 40 grand, but they should have made 50 grand in a month with me. This was already a seven-figure business. So, they've already figured some things out, but all businesses inevitably have problems, right? So the reason why my business makes the amount of money that it makes is that we specialize in solving problems, right? So we got a specific niche of problems we help solve. So that's usually in bettering their finances, right? Um, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right, so definitely, yep. Really enjoyed the video, appreciate that. What's the best way to learn a skill you can sell B2B? I don't think I have a skill that I can sell B2B, right? Here's a nugget, start with the business. Start with the business. Far too many times, people will just try to sell what you want, what they want you to buy. It is way easier to start with who you want to serve. And that could change over time. So it's not a marriage. Don't think that whatever you commit to today, you have to die with, right? It's not till death do you part. So originally, I wanted to serve third-party logistics companies that needed freight transported efficiently from their warehouse facilities to their client's client, because their client was the manufacturer. So... Starting with them, I found out, well, what do you need? You need somebody that can show up on time, unload the truck, pre-sort the freight, load the freight into their vehicle, deliver it on time, get signatures, so that way we maintain the custody chain from the time it comes in to the time it gets to the end user. You need me to bring back returns. So all of those nuances, but start with who you want to serve, right? Right now, I run a marketing agency. None of my clients expect me, nor do I even offer it to them for me to help them in the logistics of their business, right? So I don't go pick up their products and deliver it to their customers, right? That was what I used to do when I had a transportation business. Now I go in and say, okay, here's the solution to this problem. There's You could pay this amount of money and implement it yourself. Or I could implement it for you, but it costs you more money if I do the work for you, right? So start with the customer. Who do you want to serve, right? So if you want to know what B2B skill, right, who do you want to serve? I'll tell you this. Don't serve broke people. Well, don't serve broke people by charging them money. There's nothing wrong with serving broke people for free with the money that you made off of serving the people that were not broke. Right. But you're just creating a headache for yourself if you're trying to sell your expensive thing to people that don't have the money to buy and convince them that they should finance it because it's worth it. Right. It's just a headache. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let me see where we at here. Yep. 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 See some networking going on. Boom. So my clients have a variety of businesses uh, from e-commerce stores to investing companies to tech companies. Uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of to, to medical companies, to delivery companies. So so um, I really just help businesses market better, specifically online, and then help them solve their marketing problems. 
right, in an organic way. All right, so through consulting them on, hey, yo, boom, this is what you can do. You don't even need me to do it. It works, right? The reason why I know you don't need me to do it is because, like, I help other businesses do it that didn't need my face, my voice, my whatever, and they made a whole lot of money doing it, all right? But if that company is like, hey, listen, we want to specialize in our zone of genius, which is what we talk about a lot here, uh, lots of times they will say, hey, it's not a money thing. Like in the amount of time, think about this. If a company pays me 60K, some people feel like that's a lot of money. But if they say, okay, in the amount of time it would take us to do all the stuff that you were going to do for us, in our zone of genius, we could have made a million dollars, right? So do you save 60K to miss out on making a million dollars? We're talking about net profits, right? Or do you just pay the 60K so that way you can continue to operate in your zone of genius and make a million dollars, right? Or half a million dollars or $200,000. It depends on the company what margins make sense for them, right? But our biggest clients make multiple millions of dollars uh, a year if they just stay in their zone of genius. So why would they come out of that to save in comparison pennies, right? That's the value of B2B business. That's why I tell you guys, B2B business is so much easier, right? Um, boom, 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 boom. All right. St. Louis in the building, Colorado in the building. I think when it gets cold again, we might come down to Colorado, man, to see. I heard good things about Colorado winter vacations. I got to do some more due diligence on it, though, but. Definitely heard good things about my brother. My older brother stayed there for a while, I think. Um, I have a business, but having trouble because I have an old car, but it's in excellent condition. I can't afford to get a new one or rent. So do you have any advice on what I can do? I don't understand the problem. You got an old car that's in excellent condition, and you can't buy a new one. Why Why do you need a new car if your old car is in excellent condition? I, I got a South Carolina education. Maybe I'm not understanding something. But I don't really get... Let me read it again. I have a business having trouble because I have an old car, but it's in excellent condition. I can't afford to get a new one or rent one. So do you have any advice on what I can do? I don't really know what the problem is. I'm going to just be real. All right. Um, don't service broke people at all, waste of time. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Or people that don't want help servicing them. Yep. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I'm trying to do medical courier. Have a 1996 Grand Marquise but it's in excellent condition, right? Okay, so I don't know what area you're located in, but I'm assuming in that area, they're not going to let you use your POV, which is personally owned vehicle. They want commercial equipment, all right? So either you do something else until you save up the money to get a cargo van. If you can sell the excellent shape Grand Marquis for enough money to get the necessary equipment, you do that. Like, uh, yeah, like I don't... Yeah, either you, you do something else and save up the money, find a company that will let you use your POV, or you sell the car if you could sell it for enough to buy what you need. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep. But yeah, certain certain courier companies, they associate older vehicles with being high risk because you might have a lot of breakdowns. And um, and now that's like you're less efficient as a delivery company if you're always breaking down. Also, a lot of companies don't want you to use your POV uh, because the suspension was not designed for heavy freight consistently. It wasn't designed like a semi-truck, a Sprinter, a cargo van or whatever, right? Um, so your payload capacity, which is a big word just to mean how much weight it was designed to, to carry, uh, is different. So even though you could take the seats out and have enough real estate to put the stuff it doesn't change the payload capacity 
that was determined when they designed the car as well, right? So you got enough real estate to put it in there, but that car is not designed to carry that much weight. You're going to have more frequent maintenance that way as well. So that's why a lot of those companies look at you as high risk. All right. Hey, if you're in business and you're ready to take the next step to consistently make six figures or more every single year in your business, you guys know what to do. Click that link down in the description below. I look forward to seeing you guys on the inside. Like I said, when you join, give it a little while, especially if you join after business hours, which today is Saturday, but I'll make sure either myself or my assistant sends you that uh, contact information, right? You're going to get direct access to me. Here's the house rules on that real quick, then I'm going. Get the information through the five-day program. Implement the information. When you run into issues implementing the information, reach out directly to me. If you reach out directly to me before you even went through the information or after you went through the information but you ain't tried to implement the information, I'm just going to send you back to go watch the information and implement the information, right? Just being honest with you because that's, that's the right answer, all right? So you're going to get direct access to me. Um, but I'm going to be there to help you solve problems, right? The five-day program is designed to tell you everything you need to know and do to make six figures a year. If you run into issues during the implementation stage, reach out to me and I will help you get over that hurdle, right? FYI, just being honest with you, uh, prices of this program will go up. There are other things that we're working on behind the scenes to make this program even more valuable, right? Um, I'm thinking about adding an event where you come live in person and we do some other cool stuff as well. Of course, if I do a live event, I gotta rent this, rent that, pay these people to do this. So the price of the uh, tickets will go up. Now, the people that are in the program um, will be able to you know, still come in, but uh, if and when we decide to do that, right? Um, but just letting you guys know, no false scarcity here. Whenever prices go up, I'll tell you prices went up. All right, till next time, Thomas, let's stay hustling. JT Automations, I am gone.